Oh, this was an explosive moment in the courtroom. Now let's unpack it further, shall we? Still with me in the studio, attorney Noah Pines and standing by in Seattle, Vonda Sargent, also an attorney and want to welcome in in Orlando, Florida, human behavior expert and jury consultant, Susan Constantine. Susan, good to see you. And I want to go to you first, if I can, please. Uh, tell us what you were seeing as you were watching both the witness, the former law partner, and then, of course, the attorney Dick Harputley and crossing him. Yeah, so the attorney, I think that he's, his emotions were running, obviously running very high. I think he was exasperated by the fact that he was not to, wasn't able to invoke the emotion and the responses that he wanted. And the, and the attorney, the former partner, remained neutral. I thought he was much more grounded and in control of his emotions, and that infuriated his, uh, his former friend or his friend. So that's what I saw, this combativeness. And, and I tell you what, I thought that the attorney, uh, the former uh, partner uh, or the partner of the firm, I thought he did an excellent job. And I believed him because I think he has what he was saying was is that he had already worked through all of those emotions. Not that he forgave them, but he says, you know, th there's no profit in this for me to harbor it anymore. I'm moving on. So the, the, I may have had the, the anger and the frustration, but I can't live there if I'm going to be successful with my in moving forward. And I thought that was really great. Yes. And to me, I thought that Dick Harputlian, the attorney, looked like the angry one. Like, he looked like he was truly getting worked up. Uh, Susan, what did you think about it, please? Well, yeah, that's what I that's what I was talking about, is the fact that the, he was revving himself up because he wasn't getting the emotion from the witness that he expected. And that created this frustration. And so when his uh, voice started to raise, his anger started to morph, but it didn't shake the witness. And he was exasperated by that. And that's why you were seeing him become so angry because it wasn't because he was just angry. He was frustrated and fearful that he wasn't getting what he wanted. <laughs> yeah, so that was real. That was very, you know, maybe he started with, oh, I'm going to make a show, a little bit of theatrics here, and then it, it got real, so to speak. Uh, right. You know, and one thing I've learned uh, throughout my years of, of trying cases and then mm -hmm. teaching trial advocacy, um, doing my LLM in it. Uh, and Susan, I'm going to go to you on this one, please, because you do jury consulting work. You know, you're brought in by attorneys, mm -hmm. you know, to look at juries, uh, witnesses. I mean, all the action in the courtroom, helping with advocacy. And mm -hmm. something I've learned is that when you're on cross, you really have to mirror your witness in a way. If you have a mild-mannered witness, like this Ronnie Crosby, great example, he is polite, he is well-spoken. You know, mm -hmm. he's not somebody who's making or breaking the case. He's just not. He wasn't there that night. He didn't do investigative work. He's not one of the experts. He's, you know, kind of a witness, like, on the side. You know, but to beat him up like Dick Harputlian did, you know, to me, you run the risk of making the jury mad. Do you not, Susan? Yes, and you really touch on a really good point, Julie. I'm so glad how intuitive you are, and I've already said that so many times, but you really are. And, and that, that mirroring that emotion is so powerful. What he could have done was, instead of becoming so angry to try to get the witness up, he could have lowered his um, anger to bring the other one up and used... Uh, language and a demeanor that was more in sync with the witness. So you have to mirror the words, the language, the, uh, the, the physiology, the context, the movement, the breathing, all of those things are so important to bring that witness into rapport with you. And what he did is a complete opposite. And that's why I'm saying, I think he just lost it. He was at the point of exasperation. His arms were flailing around. He was pacing around. He didn't know where to go with it because he knew he couldn't shake the witness. And so this approach didn't work, but I think he was just out of his mind frustrated. That's such an important point, uh, and I love all this insight uh, you're sharing, Susan, and of course, Vonda and Noah, you as well. Um, to your point, Susan, the last point you made about him being kind of just exasperated and all of that, not sure where to go, I wonder if it has something to do with the length of this trial, because 
Our mm -hmm. team in the courtroom has been talking to the defense team. They anticipated this would go about three weeks, and they had to move out of their hotel mm -hmm. this past weekend. Dick Carpootlian was saying things uh, before the rebuttal even started about when's this trial going to be over, and it's going beyond the projected time. And He was really complaining, and I'm wondering, is he tired? Because trying cases yeah. is exhausting. We, we all three know that it takes a lot of energy, mentally, physically, to be in trial. You feel drained. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, just to kind of put a put a button on this discussion for now, a bow on it, excuse me, I'm, I'm wondering if that mm -hmm. might have been what he was feeling, true, true exhaustion. Uh, Susan Constantine, we're going to bring you in uh, for a one-on-one -on -one segment next. And one question some are asking, is there any deception uh, coming through with what's being presented to the jury in the defense case? Um, let's focus in on John Marvin, whose testimony was heartbreaking. In Orlando, Florida, we have a very special guest on the program. She is a jury consultant and a human behavior expert. Susan Constantine is still with us. Uh, Susan, great to see you as always. Thank you for making time in your busy schedule for us. Uh, John Marvin Murdoch, uh, I, I know you were able to see him, watch him closely. Uh, in your expert opinion, what were you picking up on, please? Well, what I'm doing is I'm coding the muscle movements in his face to understand his emotional uh, feelings inward and if they're being what's being presented on the outside. So I'm looking at the muscle movements right here in the center. They pull up and then these lateral movements, they pull up, which is causing these horizontal lines all the way across. This is someone of worry, concern, concentration, can be a number of things. But then when, when he tilted his head down and he was talking about what he had to do, right? Look at his forehead and all of the wrinkles go away. So that is where he's now in a different space in his heart. Like, this is what I need to do. I'm in action mode and his head went down. So he's in that internal processing, that emotional part of him. So I believed everything that he said. I thought it was an authentic I thought he was real. I thought it was, he owned it. You know, when he's putting his hands up here, this is how I felt. And it's near his heart. His words all synced with his body language. His open pan gestures and posturing was very forthright. So I thought he was an excellent witness and I did not uh, see any deception in his testimony. And that's that's great to hear, Susan. Uh, I, I know I found him to be very sincere as I was watching it, mm -hmm. you know, as objectively as I possibly can. As we like to say, we don't have a horse in the race at Court TV. Yeah. We just call it like we see it, call the balls and the strikes. And I thought in terms of just somebody who really connected to the jury mm -hmm. as a human being, I, I thought John Marvin was the best defense witness in terms of conveying to the jury just how sad this was and how awful and brutal uh, these homicides were just brutal to be shot at such close range. Um, and how about, wanted to ask you about how he said that he was doing that cleanup and he said, it was, I'm paraphrasing, something that no parent should ever have to do. But he kept saying, you know, this was for Paul. So I, I felt like I had to do it for Paul. We know that he and Paul were very, very close. Paul was mm -hmm. working for him prior to uh, his death. Um, can you kind of dive into that a little bit about maybe what he's telling us in 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 mm -hmm. saying that and in, in his actions as well? I think that he is presenting a high uh, level of loyalty, and also I think who it, this is who this person is. I think that he's not just here. I think how you do some things, you do all things, and so I don't think he did just did it for Paul. I think he. For, well, just for Paul, he did it for everybody, right? Because he's the kind of guy that just feels not responsible. That he needs to do this. It's his moral fiber. He has a high level of integrity. That's what I see in him. So I think that he was expressing that he felt that he needed to do this for everyone included. I think that he is a type of person that... Um, is very likable, that's very trustworthy, that you can depend on him, that he's going to be the one on the front line, which he's shown that he's doing. For him to literally, just think about this, Julie, that he was there and just visually put yourself there, that he was literally picking up those pieces. And it'd be interesting how he was doing it with probably with such carefulness, right? Because he is a very uh, internal 
emotional type of person. You can tell that just in his demeanor. And I think that's the way he is just in life. It's just who he is. He is. That is a part of his whole fiber. It's his whole being. That's who he is. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Susan. He, he just seems like a good guy. Uh, mm -hmm. If I had to bet, I bet the jury was probably thinking the same thing as they were hearing him speak. Uh, Susan, Constantine, we love hearing you speak. Thank you for all of your insight and expertise that you've shared with us, not just today, but throughout the course of this trial. We can't wait to talk to you some more. As we know, we are not done, but we'll let you go for now. Thank you kindly.